Welcome to iLecture Online. The next topic we're going to attack here is what we call the relativistic Doppler effect when it comes to light. So we have a source somewhere out in space that's traveling towards us or maybe away from us and it's giving off light pulses or giving off electromagnetic radiation and we see what we call the Doppler effect in that. If it's approaching us, the light will be what we call blue shifted. When it's moving away from us, the light will be what we call red shifted. How big will that shift be? What will be the change in the frequency? Well, that's what we're trying to determine here. So let's say we have a source. The source is putting out some light at certain pulses. We can also say it's maybe putting out electromagnetic radiation and we're simply watching the, the, the uh, wave train of that. So we're watching the wave crests of the radiation as it leaves the source. The source puts out the frequency called F sub naught. It has a period between the frequency, between the wave crest of T sub naught and has a wavelength called lambda sub naught. So this is what the source puts out. Notice that the source is moving towards the observer at velocity u with respect to the observer. And the observer sees the object coming closer. And so when we, the object puts out wave crests, so here's the emission of the first wave crest, and by the time it puts out the second wave crest, the object has moved to this location right here, puts out the second wave crest, but the first wave crest has moved at the speed of light is now in this position. So the distance between where the first wave crest is versus where the second wave crest is, that will then be the observed wavelength, the observed lambda. Notice we use TF and lambda without the sub naught in there to indicate the, the, the period, the frequency, and the wavelength of the observer as observed by the observer, the station observer A. Also some basic wave equations, know that the velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, so that the frequency is equal to the velocity divided by the wavelength. Now, what is the observed wavelength? The observed wavelength will be equal to this distance, which is the speed of light times the time between two peaks of the wave. That would be the distance traveled by one particular wave crest and we subtract from that the distance traveled by the source which is u times the period t. So the difference between those two would be the wavelength observed and we factor out the period and then we have c minus u times the period. That would be the wavelength. Now what do we do next? What are we trying to do here? We're trying to find the observed frequency. So the observed frequency would be equal to the velocity divided by the wavelength. And since this is the wavelength and the velocity is the speed of light, we can then say that the observed frequency f is equal to the speed of the radiation coming towards the observer, which is c, divided by the wavelength, which would be c minus u times the period t. Now what we want to do is find the relationship between the period as observed by the observer and the period as it's put out by the source. And this is where the difference comes in between what we call the Galilean transformation equations and the Lorentz transformation equations that deal with the relativistic effects. The time as observed by the source and the time as observed by the observer are not the same time. We have to take this equation here into account. So that means that the period as observed by the observer is equal to the period as the wave is put out by the source divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared divided by c squared. And so therefore we can replace t by what t is equal to in terms of the period of the source. So we can say that the frequency of the observer is equal to c divided by c minus u. And instead of writing t, we can write t divided by that, that would be t, that would be t sub naught, and oop, let me, where's my eraser? My eraser is right here. All right, so instead of writing 1 over t, we're going to write 1 over t sub naught, and t sub naught is t times this. So we write 1 over t sub naught times, that would be the square root of 1 minus u square over c square. All right, so now we have the frequency observed in terms of the period of the original source. But now what we want to do is we want to replace the period of original source by the frequency of the original source. So we can write that the period of the original source is equal to 1 over the frequency of the original source, which means 1 over t, 1 over t sub naught, can be written as the frequency of the source. So we can now write that f is equal to c divided by c minus u times the frequency of the original source, times the square root of 1 minus u square over c square. 
So now we're getting closer and closer to relating the frequency of the source to the frequency of the observer, at least the frequency that's observed. So what we want to do here probably is rearrange this a little bit. Maybe we can factor out a c squared. So we're going to write this as the frequency of the uh, by the, the frequency as observed times c divided by c minus u is equal to the frequency of the source times the square root of c squared minus u squared divided by c squared. And notice, when I write it like this, I cannot factor out a c squared that becomes 1 over c, which will cancel out with this right here. So this can now be written as follows. Let me go over here. So now we can write that the frequency observed is equal to c divided by c minus u times f sub naught times the square root of, oh, and don't forget the 1 over c, because that's what I was trying to do here, factor out. 1 over c, so I have a 1 over c times the square root of c squared minus u squared. Now notice I have a c minus u here and I have a c squared minus u squared there. Hmm, I think we can do something there. We'll see in just a moment. But first of all, let's cancel out that and we can write this as c minus u times c plus u. So the frequency is equal to the, is equal to the frequency from the source times 1 over c minus u times the square root of c minus u multiplied times c plus u. Because that's the difference of squares which can be factored like that. Now what we could do is we can write this as c minus u quantity squared and put underneath the radical. So this can now be written as f is equal to f sub naught times the quantity, so we have the square root of c minus u times c plus u divided by the square root of c minus u times c minus u. We simply square this and put a neat radical. And of course, the reason why we did that is because we can now cancel that out like this. And finally, we can write this in its final form, and this is usually written like this, that the frequency observed is equal to the square root of c plus u divided by c minus u times the frequency of the source. And this is how we want to write that equation. So now we have a relationship between the frequency observed of light coming to us from a source that's moving at very high speeds in terms of the speed of light and the speed at which the, the source is moving in terms of the frequency of the of the source. Now, of course, this is in the case that the object is moving towards us. So object is moving towards us. So that's in the case that that light is being blue shifted. But what about the case where the object is moving away from us? Well, in that case, u would be negative quantity, so this would become c minus u, and this would become c plus u. So let me come up here and write the equation again, but in the case that the object is moving away from us, so the frequency observed would be equal to the square root of c minus u divided by c plus u times the frequency of the source, and that would be the object is moving away. Object, the source is moving away and so that means it's redshifted. So this equation in case it's redshifted moving away this is the equation that we use in case it's blue shifted that is moving towards us. And so those are the two relativistic Doppler equations that tell us what the change in the frequency is of a source putting out electromagnetic radiation in the case that see they're moving towards us moving away from us at very high speeds relative to the speed of light. And that's how we derive those equations.